Thanks very much for joining us on What's Hot. As I mentioned, the Rajya Sabha is voting on the bankruptcy bill to discuss what this will mean now as far as the economy is concerned. We jo we're joined by M.R. Omarji, the member of the Bankruptcy Law Reform Committee. Mr. Omarji, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Well, the bill has already been cleared by the Lok Sabha. Now the Rajya Sabha hurdle is all set to be passed as well. Uh, you know, we've just heard from the government there explaining why this is a historical legislation and the fact that the parliamentary panel's recommendation which have, of course, been accepted by the government in total, have improved upon the bill. What do you believe will be the immediate impact as far as uh, this legislation is concerned? The immediate impact would be that uh, companies and other borrowers of the banks would, uh, would be very prompt and will, will have to start making payments on time. The commitment, commitments to pay will have to be honored. If they don't do it and if an insolvency petition can be filed Im immediately on default, that is the trigger for filing insolvency petition. So if you commit right. a default, you are going to be uh, facing an insolvency petition against you. Hmm. So, so, and the consequence of that is that once an order for insolvency resolution is passed, the insolvency professional has to take possession of all the assets and also take over right. the management of the enterprise. Now, therefore, if I am owning some business which has good value and uh, I have valuable assets which are owned by me, I would prefer not somebody else coming and taking it over from me the better course is to make payment mm -hmm. so that I don't commit a default. So, so this, this is going to be the major transformation in, in, in the system, actually. Okay. Either Mr. Omarji, you... I'd request you to just, just hold on for one second. So let me also bring in a former banker and now a top boss at KKR, Sanjay Nair, for a quick comment. Sanjay, appreciate you joining us. So the bankruptcy legislation all set to be cleared by the Rajya Sabha. We were just talking to Mr. Omarji, member of the Bankruptcy Law Commission, uh, on what this will finally mean as far as the market economy is concerned, uh, the process of creative destruction, to quote the Minister of State for Finance. Uh, what do you think is going to be the most meaningful impact immediately? Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can, I Sanjay. Go ahead. Look, I think, I mean, I don't know about the immediate impact, but I think the long-term impact is, is going to be that you're going to have a real credit market in this country where both public and private. And I think the more immediate impact is probably going to be that, uh, as Mr. Omarji said, uh, some of the, you know, situations where people thought they could delay and sort of, you know, re-engineer stuff, that will probably stop. Mm. Uh, mm. This is a pretty serious and I think one of the biggest reforms that at least I have seen in the last two and a half, three years. And, uh, you know, frankly, you cannot uh, classify this as a short-term thing. This has a massive long-term impact, which is very, very positive for attracting capital uh, into, the, into, into, into companies, both retail and sure. institutional. So I, I, I'm not sure I can answer your question from a short-term mm. perspective, but from a long-term perspective, this is... Uh, extremely, uh, extremely welcome. No, you're absolutely right. But Mr. Omarji, let me come back to you because as, uh, as uh, Sanjay was pointing out, and this is what the government has been uh, alluding to as well, that this does strengthen not just the worksmen's rights, but it also strengthens the creditor's position. But, you know, we will also now need to see the government move on amending the Sarfezi Act as well as the DRT Act. Both now have been referred to a parliamentary panel. Uh, so for the bankruptcy code in its entirety to kick in, how crucial will the amendments be to both the DRT bill as well as the Act. You see, there is one provision in the insolvency code which says that once the insolvency resolution process starts for a period of 180 days, there is a moratorium. No action can be taken against the enterprise under surface or under DRT Act. So, so therefore, during that time, an effort will be made to verify whether the enterprise is viable whether it can, the mm -hmm. debt can be restructured and whether an insolvency resolution plan can be approved by the uh, insolvency uh, 
tribunal. And if that plan is approved, that will become operative. If it is found that no such restructuring plan is possible, the company would be uh, put into liquidation and wound up. Mm -hmm. So to, to this extent, there is a modification of the, uh, the right to exercise recovery powers under these two laws will be remaining right. under moratorium for a period of 180 days. If at the request of the creditor, it is, can be extended up to another 90 days. So for a period of 270 days, you can't take any action. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for that clarification, sir. Let me also bring in Lata. She joins us in on this conversation, our resident expert, and also with us, Harish Pai, the partner at m and at Trilegal. Harish and Lata, thanks very much for joining us as well. Uh, Harish, a quick comment from you. We, of course, were chatting about this the day that the Lok Sabha passed the bill, and now uh, it's been cleared by the Rajya Sabha as well. So both, uh, both houses giving the thumbs up now to the bankruptcy code. Yes, indeed. I think it's a, it, it's a positive development. It's also good to see the, the bill go through smoothly uh, with uh, the inclusions of, of the committee. Um, and, and I think, like, uh, like, like, your, uh, like your speakers have, have mentioned, it's a, it's, it's a tremendously positive development, not just in the immediate term, but for the long-term uh, long uh, benefit of India's economy. Uh, because it provides some additional definition to uh, the credit markets uh, that are necessary for all players uh, in the economy, whether it's a lender, whether it's somebody providing equity financing as well, uh, so that the rules of the game are clear. And when there's a distressed asset, there's an ability to, uh, to resolve problems without necessarily destroying the underlying business, assuming it is a viable one. Uh, okay. So I think if from that perspective, it adds to my, it will in the long term add tremendous efficiencies to the economy. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, Mr. Pace, Mr. Umarji, uh, I have a couple of doubts uh, about uh, the timelines that we are looking at. Bill is passed by the Rajya Sabha. Now, 11 more amendments have to be passed to the Surface Act, DRT Act, Companies Act, a whole host of them. Mr. Umarji, until then, no move can happen in terms of appointment of NCLTs, etc. So, uh, we have to wait for those things, those amendments to come through? No, no. NCLT will be basically exercising powers under the bankruptcy code. Okay. So, NCLTs can be appointed. There is no problem in that. It is certain uh, changes in the... Uh, in the surface and DRT amendment, mm. the changes are also for expediting the process. No, those changes are part of this no. uh, bankruptcy code itself. They don't have to be separately done. There are uh, the the schedule to the bankruptcy code itself is providing what amendments are to be done. Okay. In the uh, uh, surface so act. So the legal the... process is over today. It is over today. Okay, fine. It is now, over. yeah, f fine, sir. And now I wanted to come to the next stage. I'm just trying to get a timeline as to when will the first case come to the NCLT. Uh, uh, how many uh, uh, company or tribunals have to be appointed? Will it be one in each state or several in some states? Some of the states uh, may be uh, under one jurisdiction. Mm. I'm mm. saying one NCLT may cover two, three states, mm. adjoining states or mm. something. Okay. That's uh, really, uh, I'm not aware exactly okay. what exactly is the plan for appointing. But and they would be benches they have... or they would be individuals? No, they would be individuals. Okay. Now, I'm asking you because at the moment, uh, the uh, 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 debt recovery appellate tribunals are all lying vacant. Uh, you know, the government j just either doesn't seem to find the people or the time to fill pl uh, positions on time. I mean, we know how many positions are vacant in the judiciary itself. Therefore, I'm asking you, what is the uh, size of people, we are, number of people we are looking at? Accordingly, I, we are trying to estimate the delay in their appointment. Will it take a year before the first NCLT ca first case is heard in the NCLT? I think it is about 15 to 20 NCLTs being set up immediately. Mm. And uh, the selection process is on and the appointments are expected to be made shortly. That's my understanding. Okay, so you think the first case can come within a year? It could be even shorter than that with uh, okay. the speed at which the work is going on. Okay.
Okay, Mr. Omarji, we'll just come back to you, but we've got other guests joining in uh, as well. Let's get in a quick comment on what the markets are likely to take heart uh, and take note of. Uh, Rashesh Shah of Edelweiss joins us. Rashesh, appreciate you joining us. The markets have digested or are trying to digest what happened on the Mauritius Treaty front, but by and large, uh, uh, concerns being allayed today by the government. But how do you see the markets reacting now to the passage of the bankruptcy code, both by the Lok Sabha as well as the Rajya Sabha? Yeah, I... Uh... I think this uh, is a fairly big structural move and quite a few people in the banking industry as well as in financial services have been waiting for this. So I think the bankruptcy court getting passed and now the new law as and when uh, you know it gets enacted and implemented over the next few months mm. is going to be a, you know, a, a very big sea change. We all know the issues with NPA and uh, I think investors and everybody has been looking towards this government to make structural changes and what we saw with the Mauritius yesterday which is also a big structural change which has been you know in the works for a long time but now removing uncertainty is a good thing and I think following it up with the bankruptcy court today mm. is, uh, is I think a great uh, step forward and almost everybody whether it's a banker or NBFC uh, has been waiting for the bankruptcy court to get passed uh, for quite some time so we're all very happy about it. Well, uh, one man who's going to certainly be happy about the passage of this bill is SPI's Managing Director, Rajneesh Kumar. Mr. Kumar, appreciate you joining us here. What is this going to mean for creditors? Uh, what is it going to mean for someone like you? Well, it's a very welcome step, uh, particularly from bankers' point of view. This was a demand from the bankers, even last year in the Gyan Sangha. And uh, after that, uh, uh, through Indian Banks uh, Association and through our own representations, uh, the, uh, this has been followed up very vigorously and uh, I think all the bankers and all the uh, creditors, they should be very happy. And this gives uh, some interim protection also to the companies to work out a restructuring of debt and uh, resolution. And uh, uh, six months time is available and extendable by another 90 days. So normally this is the time required for any asset to be restructured or to arrive at an understanding with the creditors. Mm. So this is uh, more or less uh, similar to Chapter 11 bankruptcy code in uh, US. Only thing is, yes, uh, the necessary associated infrastructure, which may not be existent today in the country, will need to be developed. And uh, if that works well, then it will be good for everyone, for the bankers, creditors, as well as the economy as a whole. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Sanjay, your first thoughts. Uh, the DRT also, the DRT Act of 1993 also said that uh, cases should be completed in 180 days. But when the case went to 181 and then 200 and then two years and then five years, nothing happened. Do you think the 180 day will be uh, respected at this time, Sanjay? I think the key here is getting the infrastructure right in terms of the DRTs and the various tribunals, having the capacity to tackle all the cases, to make sure there's no excuse that things are in queue. Um, I think it should work. I mean, I don't see any reason why it, not, why it won't. But I think we need the judicial or quasi-judicial capacity, which is the most critical thing, which I think will take maybe a few years to build, frankly. And uh, I think we're all patient. I think this is a great long-term reform, probably one of the best, as I mentioned earlier. And I think we just have to be optimistic about this whole thing. You're right. We do have to be optimistic about this. And as you pointed out, this is going to not uh, play out in the immediate term. This is going to play out in the long term. But uh, Mr. Rajneesh Kumar, let me come back to you. In terms of the waterfall or the prioritization, do you believe that uh, uh, on the basis of the recommendations of the joint parliamentary panel, the creditor's position now stands strengthened in the final bill? Uh, I hope so. I haven't gone through clause by clause as of now. So uh, definitely we are going to study in detail and our legal department will also help us in interpreting the various uh, uh, provisions of the act. 
but uh, naturally secured creditors uh, should receive uh, priorities but there may be certain other priorities like employee wages and all that but at least uh, uh, the priorities would be set clear uh, in terms of the court so there may be less confusion because many times we have seen that uh, we have gone after the secured assets realized the money and then there are uh, attachments or orders or uh, tax uh, authority is coming after uh, that money so at least all that confusion uh, i hope will get clear uh, uh, great uh, mr omar you just uh, talking about the fine print now sir uh, anything that that you would like specifically to uh, uh, to be dealt with by way of the rules which are yet to be formulated by the government in order to keep the spirit of the of the bill uh, intact the, the main you see the the major change that is coming in the system is that insolvency practitioners will be appointed as administrators for the insolvency process today the position is there is only one officer of the high court who is the official liquidator and he does the entire process of winding up a company so in his place a pri private practitioner would be taking over and he will be doing the entire exercise of hmm. uh, mm. uh, conducting yeah. the insolvency resolution a process okay. now we the the rules and regulations have to be framed mm. for recognizing creating a panel of these insolvency practitioners mm. uh, then prescribing a code of conduct for them mm. and recognizing the agencies to which they belong mm. say the institute of chartered accountants institute okay. of company secretaries mm -hmm. bar councils of which the advocates are members mm -hmm. all of them will also have to formulate uh, regulations for the uh, for taking uh, ensuring mm -hmm. that the their members who are practicing as insolvency practitioners mm -hmm. are acting in accordance with the code of conduct okay uh, well uh, harsh uh, i wanted to ask you at any point in time can this process get hijacked by the judicial process one also thought that the sarfasi act will actually allow banks to appropriate uh, recover assets without recourse to the legal system but uh, somebody or the other also always went to court uh, there were borrowers who created tenancy on their uh, uh, property uh, even as the banks were moving and then the tenant would go to court and say that my tenancy right is getting violated at any point in time do you think the judicial process could enter lata i i i think the judicial process uh, it's inevitable that the judicial process will enter uh, in some way or the other mm. i think the one of the uh, one of the aspects of the bankruptcy code therefore has been to uh, mechanize the process mm. uh, and uh, to actually limit the scope for uh, discretion and interference mm. so to that extent i think the bankruptcy code has will help uh reduce the amount of interference uh, especially where it is not warranted mm. but certainly questions of law will come up along the way mm. such as whether a security is being validly created mm. what is the priority mm. uh, is uh, as between different security holders mm. do they fall under this clause of, of of the act or another clause of the act and in a sense it's not it's it's not a negative for the judiciary to be involved because the credibility of the process also needs to be kept in mind uh, as long as the involvement is constructive yeah but uh, harsh will uh, the will this not be Lata, the gate Lata, one second yeah, sure. Lata, one minute we'll yeah. just come back to harsh in just a second we've also got mr kc chakrabarty the for, uh, the former uh, deputy governor of the rbi joining us mr chakrabarty appreciate you we have lost that line with mr chakrabarty we'll try and reestablish uh, contact sorry let go ahead no no i was just asking pes uh, therefore harsh uh, do you think that this 180 day therefore will get violated in various ways uh, simply because the courts may take their time they people will get a stay for sure even under the guise of labor laws Uh, borrowers have got stays uh, from several state uh, uh, within certain st uh, state government jurisdictions so uh, i mean how confident are you that this 180 day will be respected so i think on the 180 days which is extendable uh, to 70 days there is not much discretion for courts to extend it 
and uh, the bankruptcy law also specifically states that it prevails over all the other conflicting laws mm. so i don't i don't see this particular aspect which is i guess the central aspect of the bankruptcy law mm. uh, as one that will uh, will have too much interference because it's very clear and there's no scope for extension i think along the edges of of that period mm. and question especially during liquidation or as to whether a, a a scheme that's been approved in the 180 days meets the requirements of the bankruptcy code there could be judicial involvement mm. but i i believe that the 180 days or 270 days as the case may be will mm. will be intact uh, and uh, they should they, there's not much scope for for it no my worry that. is that even as this case proceeds and uh, uh, a bunch of creditors have taken a, a, a borrower to court uh, to the nclt is it not possible that the borrower will drag the entire case to the judicial system on one pretext or the other and therefore the 180 day cannot be met well the 180 days is, is is mentioned in the statute and the statute also says what is the consequence of a failure to resolve the situation within mm. 180 days okay. so uh, we have constitutional guarantees in terms of the ability of affected persons to go to higher courts yeah. if they feel there's a tra- you know uh, justice has not been not Fair. been done but uh clearly the provisions of statute will also have to be res- respected okay. by all concerned and the courts will be mindful of that okay. especially where there is no room for extension within the within the statute fair point actually we're being joined by uh, the former deputy governor of the reserve bank and a former chairman of a bank as well dr chakraborty he was to join uh, just a few minutes back uh, dr chakraborty finally the bankruptcy and insolvency law is passed by both houses it is the law of the land do you think now banks will be able to recover uh, loans from defaulters faster you see yeah they, it should be faster but how faster i don't know 270 days sir 270 days you don't think no nah, i don't think in 270 days it is possible you see look case will be resolved but then execution of the decree other thing you see look it will facilitate the business mm. that's no doubt it if the borrowers want to change the hand the ownership it will be easier mm. i don't think recovery wise it will be so easy because borrowers are not interested in paying back the money so what i'm saying ownership change will be easier but mm. bank will be able to recover or not i am not that sure it has to be tested but it is a welcome development there is absolutely no doubt in that and it gives some peace to the bank but i don't think the bank should lend Uh, with the objective that they will recover the money bank should lend that they did not go for such bankruptcy proceeding borrower should prosper he should do do well and he should give back the money so that should be the objective of the bank okay uh, rasesh uh, do you think the fear of this law will ensure that uh, borrowers will be better behaved uh, will it create a better culture rasesh Oh, okay that says is not with us mr Ch- dr chakrabarty the same question to you do you think it will be it will create at least a fear of god in the minds of borrowers and therefore uh, things will be no, better for bankers no no you tell me what is the fear the problem in our country is borrowers have no capital they have no stake now if i don't have any stake in the project what do i fear and that's why they are dragging that we have to understand in 90% case mane 10% me the genuine case 90% case is our borrowers big borrowers they don't have their own money in the project you know why have to why should they be upset now okay sanjay what they, nothing they are going to lose sanjay you think that because of bankruptcy you will have better behavior from borrowers okay well i think we are losing connection with some of our uh, uh, guests so we'll just get them back into the discussion table uh, if we have harsh with us Uh, all right uh, uh, dr chakraborty uh, net net uh, do you think that uh, we will at least see some of the current pending cases uh, come to the nclt or this will only be for prospective uh, cases no some of existing cases will also come look wherever borwal has a stake borwal has his own contribution borwal has a capital in the project yes there will be some result but when the borrower stake is very very insignificant he will only drag it he has nothing to lose that's what i'm saying okay. our problem is that majority of this project people see borrowers whatever they have said that money has gone these are all borrowed money whatever okay. we are talking Fair about enough. 
So in in future, if bank appraisal system improve, they look into the quality and the source of capital appropriately, and they are really the aspect definitely it is going to help. Okay. I am not saying that this is not a good development. Mm. It is definitely a good development, but it is not going to solve the existing mess of NPS or easily. That's okay. what I'm telling you. In future, it will be more disciplined. Absolutely, no doubt in, okay. about that. But okay. banks cannot blindly give the money without looking into oh, what is the borrower equity, etc. Oh, the of course, problem. of course. I mean, this is not a substitution for due diligence at all, sir. Point taken. So uh, that, that, that's the thing, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Umarji, uh, uh, are current cases also uh, m m eligible to be brought in front of the National Capital Law Tribunal when it comes, or will this be only prospectively applied? No, they will be transferred to the NCLT, the, wi the winding up proceedings and other proceedings. As far as BIFR is concerned, all pending cases are to update, mm. and the companies can file a fresh case before NCLT. Okay, so the banks will file a fresh case uh, in some of the defaulting instances before the NCA. It could be banks or it could be the company itself which is in default. Okay. Uh, you, when do you expect that could happen? You, you expect the um, National Company Law Tribunals to be appointed within a couple of quarters? Or within, the, within one quarter itself? I suppose it should be less than a quarter. Okay, so we should b ex expect that this current load of NPAs we have some bit of recovery or winding up could happen uh, very soon within a quarter or so. So actual passing final orders will take time. No. Yes. Once the the process starts with NCLT, mm. immediately there will be 180 days time. It may yes. be extended by another 90 days. So all that will have to be taken into account yeah. and then accordingly it will have to be... But that is still within the fiscal year, sir. Even if you take a couple of months for the first uh, bunch of tribunals to be appointed and then give them 180 plus 90 days, you are still th uh, would you still estimate that within FY17, some of the current pending bank loan cases, default cases, uh, could be resolved in the NCLT? We should see uh, recovery for banks? The actual recovery for bank, you see what, what happens, there are two aspects. One is that whether you're going to do a revival or a resolution Mr. plan. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir, but we've got the Minister of State for Finance, Jayan Sina, in conversation with our colleague Rituparna Bhuyan. So let's just listen in to what he has to say. Moved amendments to the surface and DRT acts as well. And basically all these acts will now be in sync. Can you just explain to us what would it mean for the Indian economy when all these acts get implemented uh, in, in, in sync? This was historic legislation and it was uh, very satisfying to find that there was a consensus on this in the Lok Sabha and today in the Rajya Sabha as well. This historic legislation uh, will profoundly transform the Indian economy because it will make three uh, very, very important uh, uh, things possible. Uh, the first is that uh, we will be able to take assets that are dysfunctional, defunct, uh, that are not being uh, uh, rejuvenated quickly and enable those assets to be revived quickly or to be liquidated quickly so that the process of creative destruction can move uh, faster and that will really help uh, the economy. So right. that's number one. Right. Number two uh, is that we will protect important stakeholders in this and these include workmen uh, who will have up to 24 months of protection as well as creditors who will uh, find that their creditor rights are very significantly strengthened and because their creditor rights are significantly strengthened they can uh, lend with a lot more conviction uh, and they can lend with lower rates because they know how the recovery proceedings will happen uh, if bankruptcy is triggered so that also uh, is very important that we're protecting these very important stakeholders in this fashion number three uh, is that because the recovery process is going to work so much better, uh, we think that it will stimulate the creation of a much deeper, more liquid corporate debt market uh, because it's now possible to price what a recovery will look like and because creditor rights are now uh, very well clarified through the waterfall uh, right. uh, you know, process that we've set up. Right. So what about existing cases where there is willful default? For example, we have a case of Mr. Malia as well. So, so can, such, uh, can the provisions of this uh, uh, code be also applied to existing cases? Yes, absolutely. Uh, if creditors so desire, they can invoke uh, 
uh, bankruptcy proceedings in all existing cases, uh, mm -hmm. except for those that are obviously uh, with uh, with uh, appellate uh, courts. Uh, right. uh, you know, for example, the Supreme Court, obviously. Right. Uh, but for <clears throat> all other proceedings, it will be possible for us to be able to invoke uh, this bankruptcy process and to put these assets uh, into this resolution. Going process. by your experience as, as a banker, you know, do you think that there will be strong triggers enough for creditors or say, for an employer to initiate, uh, you know, uh, bankruptcy proceedings? Are there provisions uh, strong enough that will give the, uh, you know, someone, you know, that trigger to initiate such proceedings? Absolutely. The provisions are very strong. Uh, all stakeholders uh, virtually have the ability to invoke bankruptcy. The workmen can do it. Operational creditors can do it. Uh, financial creditors can do it. Uh, and uh, once they invoke the bankruptcy process, then it's very well laid out and uh, it's time bound. Uh, so uh, we think, in fact, that what we will see in this is that we'll see a lot of preemptive negotiations uh, mm -hmm. because this uh, uh, set of rights is available for creditors, for workmen, and so on. Right. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Yep, uh, that's uh, exactly the point. Uh, there will be a lot of people who can initiate uh, uh, bankruptcy proceedings. Uh, uh, Mr. Umarji, uh, therefore, do you think that we are going to see uh, some decent amount of recovery of uh, loans by banks uh, within, yes, the fiscal, yes. within this fiscal? That's right. Okay. Because because the the re, it's that's what I was trying to explain. There are two ways. One is that you put the company under a resolution plan, mm. which is like a debt restructuring scheme. Mm. CDR, SDR mechanism. We are having all those. Yes. This is similar type of mm. statutory scheme. It will be. Okay. The, this is one way of. Uh, I mean recovery that will take place okay. the other is that if it can't be worked out mm. the bank the insolvency administrator has the power to take possession mm. of assets mm. and sell them okay so, so that action also will be very speedy because the the private practitioners are going to do this exercise fair point Okay. Uh, well, uh, how long do you think the government should take to appoint these insolvency professionals? As you pointed out, we have these identifiable groups of professionals, uh, the Chartered Accountants Association, the Company Secretaries uh, Association. Uh, will it take long to make these rules? Should we expect it within the quarter? I suppose so, yes. Okay, so you should expect... I mean, I, mean, I, I am really not a person who can answer this question. You to really ask the government departments who are going to do this. Uh, of course, sir, but it's an informed guess. You have seen the creation of the debt recovery tribunals yeah, yeah. from yeah. 1993. Yeah. You have seen the process. And that's why I'm asking you whether you, you can reasonably expect the, the infrastructure to be in place, both in terms of the uh, insolvency professionals as well as uh, the tribunals within the quarter. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, Harsh, I wanted to read out an interesting statistic we picked up from the World Bank. The World Bank data says creditors to defaulting companies in India recover 25 cents to a dollar in 4.3 years, 31.8 cents in all of South Asia in 2.6 years, and 80 cents to a dollar in one and a half years in the United States. Uh, obviously, we compare very, very badly. Uh, our creditors are able to uh, get only 25% of their money, and that too, f they take four and a half years. How much better will, situ will the situation be within the year itself? Do you think we could at least reduce this four and a half years to something like two years or one and a half years? Yes, I, so, I mean, without speculating on, on, on the exact uh, numbers and, and probabilities, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that this law will certainly improve those statistics. Okay. Uh, and the objective here really is to, is to have early resolution uh, to those situations. Mm -hmm. So I, I, and I think this is also an important component of the ease of doing business mm -hmm. uh, because the ability to recover debts from your counterparty, whether you're not only if you're a lender, even if you're an operating creditor, mm -hmm. is an essential element of the ease of doing business. Okay. Well, uh, we've got, uh, once again, uh, SBI's Managing Director Rajneesh Kumar with us. Uh, uh, Mr. Kumar, do you think the very existence of this law in the statute book would make it easier for bankers and creditors to negotiate with uh, uh, borrowers. Do you think they will come to the table uh, purely because of the fear of the law? Uh, you know, what uh, needs to be understood is that the reason you need a strong bankruptcy law is 
that the companies which don't have the capability to compete in the market or over leveraged and this thing there has to be a process through which we need to die mm. so bankruptcy law does exactly that and uh, it gives six months and uh, extendable by another say three months so nine months process to arrive at a resolution either the company arrives at an understanding with the creditors that how the debt will be restructured and the company would be revived but uh, at the end of this process if it is realized that uh, there is no hope of the company then it goes into liquidation and that liquidation process starts today uh, liquidating a company is a very difficult process in uh, our country where you have to go to the high court and it takes forever to get a order for liquidation and complete that process so to that extent any capitalized society in the world it has a strong bankruptcy law which allows for the exit of the v so the law exactly does that in terms of recovery whether it is india or it is us or uk or anywhere depending upon the security and the uh, like uh, uh depending upon the security the recovery is not more than 30 35 cents even in us uh, if you recover 30 or 35 cents in respect of a loan the people or bank consider themselves lucky so the uh, the, the whole purpose of the act is to provide a framework for exit of the companies which are no more uh sustainable don't carry a sustainable level of debt and what i feel is that because now we have a law which is a proper framework the leveraging which company has companies there it should uh, it should encourage a rethink uh, amongst the promoters of the companies that how much they should leverage or borrow or how do they manage their Uh, liabilities so that itself should prove uh, to be a uh, good step and it may help in deleveraging mm. the uh, system as a whole you're absolutely right it may impose some much needed discipline as far as promoters are concerned we've seen that problem of debt playing out across uh, the private sector with broken balance sheets at this point in time but uh, mr rajneesh kumar mr kc chakrabarty harish mr omar ji appreciate you joining us here on cnbc tv 18 and decoding the implications of the bankruptcy code uh, the bankruptcy bill has now been cleared by the rajya sabha today it's not as if it's going to mean a uh, significant change starting tomorrow because remember the legal framework has been cleared by parliament but the regulatory arc architecture is yet to be put in the place and of course rules will have to be notified by the government but this is a story that we've been tracking closely here on CNBC TV 18 and we will continue uh, to bring you the developments as far as the bankruptcy code is concerned but